Hello everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood Manti here, bringing you another Alps Group tutorial. And today we are going to be focusing on everything user input. So there are two main types of user input you can get with Alps Script: buttons and text. So let's get started. So the very first type of user input I'm going to try to get is buttons. So we can set a variable with a value turned of uh, button input by doing something like this. So set, that's just name is var name. So we're going to set a variable var name. Two, and this is where we are going to display a dialog box. So display dialog. Now this is going to get button input, so we can just put some text here what we want displayed in our dialog box. So this is some text. Actually, you know what's better? Choose an option. Plain and simple. So this is going to display the default dialog box, which we hit run. We see here. Now we wrote text. Let's choose an option. And you either hit cancel or OK. Now, if you hit cancel, it's going to stop your script. So, as you can see, your error user canceled number negative 128. Now, there's nothing wrong with the script, just cancel cancels the script. So, I'm going to hit OK this time. OK. As you can see, we have button return OK. Now, say you want something other than default buttons. So, after this, we just want to put buttons, space, then a list. So, we make a list of buttons. I'm just going to have two buttons here. Option. Uno, and then option dose. Now you can have as many buttons as you want, so you can do like keep going on and on, but I'm just gonna have two buttons because it's gonna take forever to type out. Now also to note, you can substitute a list into this. So if you watch my last tutorial, you'll know what the list is, and you can just put the list name right here. But that'll be a little extra work today, so it's going to leave this right here. So we can just run this, and as you can see we have option one and option two and up button return option one. But say you want to actually just get a string from this. So we can set button returned to button returned of our name. This is just going to get a string of what button returned instead of this crazy thing right here. So we're going to run this, option one, and so we just have a string here of option one stored in our variable button returns to access later. So I'm going to show you in a few uh, later tutorials how to use this to change you know the direction of your script and stuff, but that's for another day. So you can also set a default button to be chosen. So as you can see, I'm just gonna run this. Oh, never mind. Let's just get rid of this. Do, do, do. Run. Now we have OK here kinda highlighted. If we hit enter the default option is OK. Now say you want a different default. Let's do default button. I think that's what it is. OK. Run. Actually, let's change the cancel because OK is already the default. There we go. Get out. There we go. And as you can see, we have changed our default button to cancel. So if I hit answer, enter, excuse me, it will cancel the script. So that's pretty much everything about getting button input. Now I'm going to show you how to get text input. So let's just start over. So set var name to display dialog. Enter some text. I'm going to do default answer and just leave this blank. So we can run this and we have a text box. So some text. Text return some text button return to OK. Now, say you want some text, I'm going to just put enter some text in this box. Run. And the default answer will be right here. So most times, you know, we can just leave this blank or something, but you know, I guess we can find some sort of use for this. So I'm just going to hit OK. OK. Now we can also put buttons in this, so buttons, button 1, button 2, button 3. So these are going to display instead of the default OK and cancel buttons. You know, why not just have a default button anyways? Button will be button 3, 2, 3. So we have default button, button 3, enter some text in this box from right here, and enter some text. So this is some text. Now I don't want to choose button 2, I'm just going to choose button 2. And you can see here we have text return, this is some text, and button return button 2. Say you want to just get a string instead of this, um, this is called a property. You can just do set string returned to string returned of var name. And let's just return string returned run. So this is some 
text button two. Variable's not defined, I must have to text return. Oh, that's right. Text returned. Uh getting a little mixed up here. So let's put text. I thought typing that out again. There we go. So you just have a string of text. So that's a very simple way of just getting straight up plain text from what the user has returned. So that's about it for getting input from the user. Let's, let's just have a quick recap here. You can set variables, so set var name to display dialog. And display dialog is what you're going to use pretty much all the time to get input. So you can just right here just have some text if you want it, buttons. If you want um, different buttons, you can have buttons and just start entering your buttons here. If you want default buttons, that will be highlighted when the dialog box is created. So you default, wait, no. Default button. That's right. If I can type that correctly. And let's see. You can get the value of the button return to set new value, whatever, to button returned of var name. So, so just get some text of the button returned for easy comparisons. If you want text, just display dialog and then default answer. And then here's what will be inside the text. You can put buttons after this. You can get text by doing set text returned to text returned of whatever. And actually, I think that's about it. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see you next time.